with Edu Gaspar leaving Arsenal, Arsenal need to appoint a new sporting director. The newspapers have linked us with several names, but the question is, who is the best man for the job? I don't have a clue, but together we're going to take a deep dive into the profiles of people who have been linked with the job. Let's go. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment, and tell me who you believe would be the best based on what information I've presented. At number one, perhaps the most recognisable name on the list is the Portuguese man Luis Campos, who's well experienced and a highly respected football sporting director slash football executive. He's widely regarded as one of the most astute talent scouts and directors in the modern game. As you know, he's built a reputation for building competitive squads with a limited budget, discovering talent that can develop to a world-class platform and revolutionising football recruitment strategies. I mean, his impact on modern football has been immense and you could argue he's set a gold standard for squad building Building, influencing how clubs across Europe approach talent acquisition and also recruitment. You look at his work at Monaco and Lille in particular, they demonstrate scouting um, excellence and also show strategic planning on both a financial and sporting aspect and also show successes in that regard. Campos remains one of the most highly sought after figures in football and his methods continue to inspire directors and clubs worldwide. Now, at the time of making this video, his content track at PSG is winding down and there are simultaneous rumours with PSG trying to get him to commit his future. So is it a case where Arsenal are genuinely looking at him, genuinely exploring the opportunity to bring an experienced man who's going to leave his job on paper? Or is it a case of creative journalism for those very same reasons? I'm not too sure. I've always said I do like the unique approach Arsenal took where you've got, you know, young professionals relatively on the playing field and non-playing field all growing together. But I do believe we need an experienced head and, a, and another experienced football head. I am not comparing Mikel Arteta to Arsene Wenger or Campos to David Dean. They're very different. But for those who are old enough to remember, you know, there's a thin line between genius, being a genius and being insane. And I think David Dean was able to pull Arsene Wenger back from that. Where you look at some of the signings that haven't universally been agreed, Mikel Arteta, rightly or wrongly, has got his way. If we've got a more experienced man that could, you know, better utilise our, our resources and is given the licence to do that from the Cronkies, then maybe we don't necessarily spend 65 million on Kai Havertz that's spent to a more traditional striker. Take nothing away from Kai Havertz just as an example, where you look at the signings of Aaron Ramsdale, actually replacing Ramsdale with Raya, Califuri and Kai Havertz, and you just scroll through the Athletic or something of that ilk, it shows you that it wasn't a universal popular decision by Arsenal to do that. Mikel Arteta pushed for it and he got his way, which probably shows you the Cronkies probably need to give more power to the next sporting director. But I digress, people. Where you look at his philosophy and approach, Mr. Campos's talent identification is world-renowned. He's known for finding young players before they become um, well-known well, well entities. And they Next on the list, at 43 years of age, in his early 40s, like Edu, we have Thiago Scuro, who has over two decades of experience. Naturally, his career began in his homeland in Brazil. He worked at various clubs and in regional leagues before making his way to the European game and finding himself at Monaco as their sporting director in 2023 after joining from RB Leipzig. He is known as a strategic planner with strategic thinking, adaptability, and if you're going to work at a club like Monaco, you need a keen eye for emerging talent, which he has shown. These qualities could make him a fitting candidate where you look at Arsenal as we seek, above all, a sporting director who is a visionary, capable of driving the football club forward. He has worked at RB Leipzig, he has worked at RB Borgandantino, forgive me if I'm wrong, he actually might have went there before he went to Monaco. He did eventually replace Paul Mitchell, who's English and known for in his own way how he operates as a sporting director. You can see on screen the various players that he's brought into the club over the last couple of years, seeing their trajectory, and you can see that they're all kind of indirectly emerging talent, or very few of them are the finished articles, which obviously has adaptability where Arsenal's concerned. What's interesting to me, apparently his philosophy is centred around human relations, fostering a sense of belonging, organisation, and he's known as being a tough negotiator. Now, some fans 
kind of criticized Edu for such people, if I'm honest with you. Um, he's known for his willingness also to connect all aspects of the club and build relationships with key stakeholders, in which Arsenal talk about collaboration all the time. He's also, through working at the Red Bull Network, has a structure in place in terms of the multi-club network kind of stuff. And that is something I would think is a long-term option for Arsenal and it needs to be people. Again, he went from being CEO to sporting director. He kind of played a key part in the organisational reshuffle at Monaco and Monaco are doing quite well. They're not quite doing what they did when they pipped PSG to a league title, but they're doing quite well. And also on the topic of the Red Bull Network, where you look at him indirectly and directly working for Red New York Red Bulls, uh, Salzburg and also Leipzig, this shows he has an integration of clubs worldwide and above all must have the competency of emerging talents, where to look, how to look, how to get deals done and also keeps an eye on the future people this experience has given him a unique perspective of managing football across different markets and cultures which evidently is going to benefit arsenal you know his strategies often emphasizing once again identifying and nurturing young players throughout the academy and obviously leveraging club scouting networks people you know when you read online it says he's data driven he makes data di di data driven apologies decisions apparently he's a strong advocate for using data analytics to guide decisions from player recruitment to tactical approaches obviously the eye test is also going to be known he's also known for his approach around sustainability he prioritizes creating a self-sustaining football model ensuring clubs can thrive financially while being competitive on the pitch now does that not sound like arsenal to you lot people where you look at global collaboration he has the ability to bridge local and global football philosophies and that makes him a valuable asset in organizations with strong ambitions which i hope arsenal is above all he's proved slash proven himself to be a, an astute operator who does his due diligence when identifying players um, and making sure they're the right profile of the team getting them in for the right price and he's also been known to do some shrewd signings in the summer which doesn't always mean bad so i like what he could bring on paper as you know arsenal have also been linked with and you're gonna have to give me for mispronunciation of his name simon rule some of you lot will remember him being from his playing days Obviously, he's a former Leverkusen player, ironically, and German footballer, and has fastly become a very well-respected football executive in that right. As said, currently, he's working as the sporting director of Leverkusen. He's known for his leadership and intelligence and data analytical approach off the field, as well as his strategic squad building, focusing on, again, like some, assembling a balanced team with youth experience and technical quality, which every sporting director should do. Every team should want experienced players and young players. You know, variety is the spice of life. Uh, based on reports, he's seen as one of the brightest minds currently in football management or higher executive football management. And his approach serves as a model for clubs aiming to combine competitive ambition with financial prudence people. He's helped to recruit the likes of Boniface, Frimpong, Mundo, Hinkapi, Florian Verts, Tat Soba, Granite Xhaka. These are players of different profiles from different nations who are at different periods in their career, who have all simultaneously helped Leverkusen to achieve what they've gone on to do, which is picking up a few trophies and like Arsenal going invincible. I mean, being invincible is also something that is obviously a good thing. They pipped by into the title, which is no mean feat. And again, like you've seen with Edu, took a chance on an inexperienced manager in Jabi Alonso. He's also been linked with Liverpool and Roma. Again, rumours are rumours. Oh, you could also throw, throw Moussa Diaby into that as well. You have to look at Leverkusen's recent success as not just a stroke of luck. Luck happens when preparation is done. And that has to be a result of Leverkusen's team and Simon Rule's deliberate and strategic planning and it'd be fair to say currently there's a proven track record that it seems to be working. Where you look at sourcing young players, stars of tomorrow, trying to compete against a juggernaut in Bayern Munich, in our case it would be City it makes sense to have him on the shortlist. I think you guys have had enough of me butchering names, so I mean no disrespect, but another man that has been on the list is Mr. Tim um, of West Ham. He's known as a sophisticated and meticulous operator who embraces a data-led approach. His arrival, initial arrival at West Ham was seen as a coup. He's someone that seems, based on reports, that likes to be ahead of the curb. You know, obviously at the moment with the manager, Luka Tegi, and obviously the signings not really doing much for West Ham, it 
looks like it was a bit of an issue, we'll pull it, in the transfer market. But they were praised for how the, the players they signed. They were praised for installing Lupetegui. And it, it, it makes sense, people. Again, a fellow German, someone that's worked at a couple of clubs that knows what he's doing. It's well known he did not necessarily see eye to eye with David Moyes. Uh, Lupetegui himself said on the first day, these two individuals, him and, and obviously Tim, had a disagreement about recruitment. So is he a bit of a con confrontational figure? Does it give you shades of, of missing to Arsenal? I don't think Arsenal are too keen on him, people. But what I can't do is sit here and downplay his work. You know, there was some good signings at West Ham. You know, he was instrumental in them signing, ironically, former Arsenal man Mavra partners. You know, he done very well to help them get Kudus. Um, he's probably better known for his work where he worked with Simon Roos, as mentioned earlier, um, at Leverkusen and Bremen people, which again, this is going to put you in good regards. Now, personally, I don't think he scores that high up the list at Arsenal, but who am I? I don't work for Arsenal. I don't know anything, but I do like what I see from him. Gregory Lorenzi. As of 2024, he remains currently a prominent figure at Brest, contributing to their efforts to maintain their competitiveness in France's top footballing league or league R. Under him, they've actually, for the first time in their 74 history, competed and qualified for the Champions League, which, to be honest, when you're fighting the likes of Monaco, Marseille, PSG and the budgets that they have, that is not an easy feat and something that should be applauded. He's played a pivotal role in shaping the club's squad through strategic signings. Looking online, his approach seems to focus on balancing young talents with experienced players while obviously maintaining Bress's financial constraints with the greatest of respect as a mid-tier league club. He's done a lot of notable things, people. He's helped them get into the Champions League. This summer, he signed a number of competent individuals who have brought something to their squad. They maintain a focus on outsmarting the market and nurturing young talent that they bring in or that comes through their academy. Of course, there is an element of having to sell players on to maintain competitiveness and look after the balance sheet. They've punched well above their weight in Liga. They've secured key signers that have aligned with the club's strategic goals and ensured once again financial stability. So this shows his competencies. Once again, they shocked the whole of probably the world, but more so France people when they did qualify for the Champions League. And as a sporting director, naturally you need to make it difficult decisions. If there's one thing you can praise for Edu, it would be his willingness to take a chance on the inexperienced and still inexperienced five or so years into his role, Mikel Arteta. The same rings true for Mr. Lorenzi as he convinced Eric Roy to return to coaching, which some would say was a stroke of genius people. He led them to third in the league, which is their best ever league finish. And as I've said a couple of times, Champions League qualification. They did very well in the last summer to stretch their budget to the extent they did. They carefully, craftily, finesse a well-rounded squad people and they're laughing at that when you look at Lorenzi I think he demonstrates the importance of clearly determining the profile of player that you want scouting structure and manager people you know when they look to replace Mue and and Strachano I can't pronounce his name they've done well in that regards they've already they're a kind of club that have the replacements for the replacements on top of obviously bringing in good names as suggested and there seems to he could be someone that could angle for a move to Arsenal. He's been linked with clubs in France prior. He's also actually technically been linked with Roma as well as Arsenal. So he could be someone to take a chance on. And obviously Arsenal love a French connection. Roberto Alabi, he's a Spanish football sporting director currently serving as the director of football at Sociedad. He has gathered a lot of significant respect within the footballing world for his expertise, his strategic and clear vision and his leadership qualities and also being instrumental into Sociedad's recent success people and remaining competitive in Liga. He's had a couple of stints at Sociedad before, but he returned to the club in 2018 as the director of football. Naturally, key responsibility will be building the squad and shaping the football club's philosophy while sticking to their principles. As we know, Sociedad and Bilbao, they're very keen on local talent and players that reflect the fan base off the field. And ironically, you know, he is Spanish like Mikel Arteta from the same region. We see a growing Spanish influence at all levels at Arsenal. Could this be something? In fact, he actually signed Mikel Arteta once upon a time. And naturally, because of Arsenal's dealings in recent years for Kieran Tierney, for Nacho 
Monreal, for Mikel Marino across the summer, and maybe a couple of other examples. He's someone that might, while he's been on the outside, might have a working insight as to how Arsenal like to operate. Despite his contract being until 2026, he has actually told Sociedad that he would like to depart the football club. And I mean, his time at Sociedad is going to be remembered fondly. He helped establish or re-establish Sociedad as one of the leading clubs in Spain. They ended their 30-year drought, people, when they won the 2021 Copa del Rey. He's also credited with assembling a squad that, again, balances youth development with strategic signings. You look at Ojarabal promoting Martin Zubamendi. The same could be said for Ojarabal. And Ander Beresiga. I cannot pronounce his name. Forgive me for mispronunciation. But it shows there's a key remit to promote academy talent. He obviously got Martin Odegaard on loan, which probably played a role in Arsenal indirectly once upon a time signing him. You look at the signing of Alexander Rizak, you know, they bought him for 10 million and sold him for 70. What a profit that is. They obviously got David Silva when they needed it and Kubo to ensure the team's competitiveness. When you look at the acquisition of Mikel Moreno when he was pried away from his former club, he quickly established himself as a, a member of Sociedad's midfield and the heartbeat of such people. You know, his value skyrocketed. Look at his, how he was looked at in the footballing world to obviously him being signed by Arsenal for a lot of money. So it shows he can find trash and turn it into treasure. Forgive me for referring to these players as that people. You know, you look at what he's implemented. The philosophy focuses on long-term stability, people. It leverages the academy. It makes astute moves in the market and players that fit the system and the dynamic and remains competitive. They've obviously consistently competed in European competitions, which is music to the Cronkies ears, being more recently in the Champions League prior to the Europa League. Um, so they're doing what needs to be done. Youth development, balanced squad building, club identity. It makes sense. And it makes sense as to why Mr. Roberto Alobi has established himself as one of the most effective sporting directors, not just in Spanish football, but in world football. His work at Sociedad is a model for clubs looking to compete at the highest level while having financial uh, sustainability and a strong identity, if I'm completely honest with you. As I said, people, for me, he would be someone that I'd be keen on because maybe he could help Zubamendi convince him bring Zubamendi with you and convince him to leave he's not only from Spain but from the same similar region as Arteta he's clearly significantly experienced at his role where Arsenal need that youth academy and promoting the youth and making sure they kick on is something that's central to him outsmarting the market you could argue Arsenal need to start doing that and most importantly having a clear identity now of course you know in the modern day budget management financial operations all of these sort of things go in to being a sporting director in part people so it makes sense for me so yeah people i'm no expert on you know the inner dealings that these directors have done but i do think i've done my best to give you lot at very least an overview who would you lot take as a sporting director for me it's either got to be olabe or sociedad or luis campos i just think because They've got a proven track record of what we want to do. When you think of Alabe, we'll be here all day talking about what he's done at Sociedad. When you think Luis Campos, you think, you know, what he did in his own way at uh, Monaco and Lille. I want that. I want an experienced head to kind of guide Mikel Arteta because I do think we're in a unique place that Mikel Arteta at present is the only footballing brain in the structure of, of Arsenal Football Club. So, yeah, man, it wouldn't surprise me if no doubt none of these names end up being the sporting director. I'm keen to see what it looks like. We've obviously been linked with Murta Saka, Rizitsky and people of that ilk. Personally, I want somebody a bit better, if I'm honest with you, or I, I should say a bit more experienced. But you can't rule out another young, young sort of individual individual youngest individual because there's some young ones on the list that obviously have done what they need to do you know over the international break we've evidently heard that the executives and the decision makers and Mikel Arteta flew to LA to speak with the Cronkies about all things Arsenal you'd imagine this is on the agenda you'd imagine Arte Arsenal apologies started planning for this way before it became clear that Edu was leaving because they must have got wind for it. Even going back into the summer, people, um, you know, Edu was linked with a move away from Arsenal. I do think the sporting director needs to be given an equal kind of voice to Mikel Arteta because for all of Edu's faults, I don't think he was allowed to kind of project himself, if I'm completely honest. But that's my thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you leave a, a, a name as to who you want. Appreciative to you lot tuning in.